Hey, this week we're going to continue to work on the roll cage for my Porsche 911 project. Check it out. Garage time. Last week I left off with paper templates for the base plate on the roll cage main hoop, and now it's time to put it into steel. All right, I got these um, plates cut out and you saw me cut them out with the plasma cutter. What you don't see is the, you know, the cleaning up of the edges. I'm using a bench grinder. It's got a stone wheel on it, a big six inch wheel, and then a wire brush on the other side. It's in another room, so I, I, I can't uh, take video in there. This is shaped well enough. Let me show you how it looks in the car. Okay, here's the plate in the car and I have this edge just overhanging a little bit probably overhangs about three sixteenths, three sixteenths of an inch. It fits pretty tight into this corner, but I can still get my welder in there. So I'll be welding around the entire perimeter, but I'm going to bend this edge down so it sort of follows the uh, curvature of the car. I think it'll be stronger, number one, and two, it'll look like the plate kind of belongs here if it has a little bit of curve to it. Yep, so this fits like a glove now. That little bit of uh, radius on there is gonna look better when it's welded in there. I don't plan on grinding those welds down just for inspection purposes. So these will be MIG welds here from the base plate to the car. And then I'm going to TIG weld the roll cage to the base plate on the bench. Okay, I think I'm done with the uh, front seat for the time being. I'm gonna have to pull it back out when I position the harness bar. But right now I need to get this other base plate in and I don't wanna um, damage the seat because it's kind of in my way. So it's easy to take out. I'm just gonna put it in its box and uh, hang it from the ceiling again. <laughs> Okay, I put a, a few temporary tack welds to get the base plate oriented with the main hoop. And this is also going to be useful because I need to make sure that this is going to work. I need to make sure that this bar can actually come out of the car. This corner right here is behind that little 
portion of the uh, door pillars. The base plate kind of goes behind that corner, so I need to make sure that I can twist this out of the way. And also, it's gonna be even more difficult when the uh, rear backstays are in place. So I'm gonna to try to remove it one more time. Okay, what I was afraid might happen did happen. So it was really uh, tight getting it out with the plates on. And I'm gonna have to probably remove a little portion of this corner because it's just too tight. In fact, I broke the other side off just trying to wedge it out. So those tack welds broke. I just bent it a little too much just to get it out. Okay, I welded um, that base back on. So now I have both bases on and I'm gonna try to put it back in the car and see how that works. Okay, cutting those corners definitely did the trick. I was able to get the, uh, this portion of the roll bar at least in the car pretty easy. It slid, it slid right in. I didn't remove too much material, so I'm not worried about the square centimeter requirement. It's, uh, it's still oversized. Okay, it's time to take it out again so I can start working on the backstays. Okay, most roll cages, the bar that comes back uh, ends up terminating right about here. This corner is pretty strong, but just behind this firewall is the coilover turrets. Now, this car has been modified for coilovers, and so there's going to be a lot of force on those coilovers on that turret. And the idea, and this is what separates kind of my cage from the ones you can buy off the shelf, is I want the rear stays to go through the firewall and tie into those gussets that I did in a previous video. This is not only for safety, it's gonna be stronger, but it's also there to improve the performance of the car. It's gonna increase rigidity, and it's also gonna take some of the load off the shock turrets or the uh, coilover turrets and put it into the roll cage and then distribute it throughout the car. So it's gonna be transferred up here into this corner, um, and then the, the, so the main hoop is actually gonna get welded to this B pillar, and then it attaches down here to one of the strongest parts of the car where the main hoop attaches. It's not the easiest way to do it, but um, I think it's gonna be worth the effort. Now to get access to do the welding through the um, rear of the coilover turret means I need to cut uh, a very large hole in order to get access to it. One of the things that was suggested to me by um, Mr. Shepard is if you're gonna cut this out, you might as well cut the whole thing out all the way across and make it so you have access to it, not only for welding, but also for some maintenance. There's also gonna be um, some wiring that's coming from the engine compartment into this rear seat area. The engine control management controllers, all that stuff, the wire harnesses, gives me the option of having access to that stuff and having it right here in the rear seat area. Okay, I just tack welded this strip onto the firewall and it's temporary so I can cut a straight line. I don't want to have to modify the cut after I do it, so I'm gonna use my air saw with the thinnest blade I can find and just make a straight line across the top so that the part that I cut out can be reused again.
Okay, here's the uh, semi-straight line. You know, it's, it didn't work out as well as I had hoped. Um, that blade is really skinny, likes to wander, but uh, it's, it's okay. I probably could have done just as well just freehanding it. You can see there's a little uh, slip right here and um, it's a little bit wavy on this side. Okay, so now there's a giant hole in the back. Um, this is all cut out for access to this. So these are the triangular gussets that I added to these shock tower turrets, which are now coilover turrets. And this is what all the suspension loads come into this cross member. And I also added stiffening plates where it attaches to these kind of frame rails. So I want access to that so I can attach the roll bar to this part of the car where it's gonna see the highest loads. These threaded rods are um, just temporary solid shocks. I'm gonna make this removable panel such that I'm gonna be able to bolt it back in place. So I'm gonna be adding some flanges to the backside and I will put a seal here so that there's no carbon monoxide or fumes coming into the driver's cabin. Okay, now it's time to put the main hoop back in the car so I can work out the lengths for the backstays. Okay, now it's just a matter of tying in the backstays to this joint here, right down to the shock turret. Now, when I weld the diagonal bar in, I was thinking ahead and trying to get it to line up roughly with the shock tower. Just like that. Anybody know the uh, timber hitch knot? Okay, that is roughly what I want to do from there to there. Now, one of the requirements is to check the angle between the main hoop and the backstay has to be more than 30 degrees. So I'm gonna check that real quick. Because I put the hole through here, um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be more than that. It looks like 45 degrees to me. But I also need to cut the back of this off so it can go down. I'm gonna weld it right into this area right here. This is already um, heavy gauge metal. And then I'm gonna tie it into the shock turret and also this base plate. So it's gonna move down you know, another sort of three inches. That will change the angle. I think that's kind of parallel to the backstay bar. And this is measuring, yeah, it's 46 degrees. So it's got a big enough angle. Okay, here's a view from the back window. And this bar is sort of following the shape of the window. Um, it's not really leaning in or out. So I think it looks good from the back. The alignment looks okay. Okay, the tube is trimmed now to uh, the shock turret. Up here, this is just holding itself at the moment. I did this side first because it's a little bit easier. The other side is gonna require the fish mouth to be modified because it has a diagonal bar where it intersects as well. So it's kind of a, a triple junction and uh, that's just gonna require cutting off the bottom of the fish mouth to kind of mate up with this diagonal tube. I'll just do that by hand, a little bit of trial and fit. You can see I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth so many times. So I don't know if you guys caught how I duplicated the uh, shape on this turret side. I just took a piece of notebook paper and I wrapped it around the tube and uh, just used the edge of the tube to kind of crease the paper. I cut it out with scissors and then I marked the new tube um, in the areas that needed to be, you know, hand tailored a little bit. Okay, these tubes are the same length, so I'm going to do another trial fit in the car and then tack them in place to the main hoop. Then pull it out here to weld it. Okay, I've just been placing this tube 
um, on the passenger side where it's a little bit easier. I am trying to determine, um, is it square with the main hoop? And also determine the distance from center line so I can mark the driver's side and begin um, notching for this diagonal bar. Hopefully you can get a little bit of an idea how this is uh, shaping up. It's not fit super tight because it's, it's sort of relaxed in the car. Basically what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to fit it up tight with my glove and just tack it in real quick. Okay, we're back here on the bench and just gonna clean this up real quick with acetone. And uh, I am going to drill a vent hole this time. I'm just gonna drill it in the base plate. Um, there was some discussion in the comments about, you know, inspectors will drill their own hole later just out of randomness. So I don't need to drill the hole right now. So I'm gonna put it in the bottom of the base plate. Another guy had that idea. I am going to be monitoring the uh, position of this bar relative to the table because it's gonna move when I weld it. Okay, I was just gonna show you that I'm using a square to keep this tube perpendicular to the main hoop. That's how it was designed in the car, so it lines up with the turrets. Trusty uh, digital level here. And I'm gonna write this down, it's 47.5. Okay guys, my battery is dying, so I wanted to just kind of show you what happened after I did a couple tack welds. I got, you know, kind of the four corners. Angle, indi angle indicator says 47.25, it was 47.5, you know. All right, while my battery was charging, I finished all the welding on this, uh, the main hoop, the backstays, the, uh, the base plates, all finished, and uh, let me show you up close. Okay, there's more to come on this roll cage. We'll continue next week or even the week after. But please uh, take a look. This new playlist I have here on the screen is a uh, playlist from sequential order, but oldest to newest. I think that was a request and it makes it easier to just follow the progress um, one by one. So please check out the link. Also, Garage Time shirts available. Please uh, like and subscribe to the channel and uh, enjoy your weekend. Happy Easter, everyone. Bye.